Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the 2022. It is 22, yes, yeah, okay. If you're not familiar with this video, it's something I do every year, and if you look. Right, let's start again. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And today it's the 2022 War Room update. And if you're not familiar with this video, it's something I do annually, uh, and have a look back at old videos if you missed because obviously i'm not going to cover the same stuff again things like the queen mary uh, this place is full of gifts sent in from you guys so very very special a lot of this stuff is very very special indeed uh what else um uh what was i gonna say oh yeah wristwatch chat <laughs> uh the fortis cosmonaut because of course orange hands orange piping on the tracksuit very sporty, so I went with the black uh, rubber, plain black rubber uh, strap from Risk Candy Watch Club. And if you pan down, I have my favorite Air Maxes on. Of course, the classic there, my favorite sneaker of all time. A lot of you asked in the sneaker review and a couple of videos I've done, why do I wear sneakers indoors? Well, these are only for indoors. That's why I keep them nice, crisp and white. I have separate white sneakers for outdoors. Of course, white goes with just about any tracksuit uh, and uh, beyond that, they're very, very comfortable. Uh, so I think that's about it for the intro. Let's get into it. Right, so let's start at the bookcase. If you guys remember in the early days of the channel, I used to do all my videos in front of this very same bookcase. I've dragged it all the way here to Philadelphia from New York. Uh, I've got a ton of new books. I don't know if I should share that. You know what, I will share this one. Hold on a second, stay there. This was uh, from Hugo, of course, and he didn't even bother to sign it. Can you believe it? Uh, the Ultimate Visual History of Jurassic Park. This is an outstanding book. Lots of goodies, maps, storyboards, part of the script. It's a whole part of the script there. Um, so many goodies packed in here. And of course, lots of photographs of uh, Hugo. I think that's probably why he bought, <laughs> he bought it. What is this? Ah, storyboard. Fantastic. Is that Hugo? No, it's a Velociraptor. God, I mustn't get that, uh, mustn't get them confused. He'll be, oh, there he is. Uh, obviously with one of his colleagues there doing some fantastic acting work, obviously. Yeah, you don't wanna hear about Jurassic Park. So uh, the first thing you'll notice is this. This is Chatsworth House, located in Northern England in the Peak District. It's one of my favorite all time pieces of uh, English architecture. So this is a company uh, based in England. I'm a massive fan of English Baroque. So this is very Italian inspired. So it's a bit like me, really. Uh, the classic country stately home. It's been in Pride and Prejudice. Uh, I think in an episode of Peaky Blinders, The Duchess with, uh, it's Kira Knightley, right? Yeah, Kira Knightley. Oh, and The Bounty, which of course has a personal family connection as well. I'm not gonna get into that one. Chatsworth House is still, believe it or not, uh, lived in by the same family, the Cavendish family. It's the seat of the Duke of uh, Derbyshire, I think it is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. And it's funny, they're, they're, their family goes back all the way to 1549, um, almost as old as my family, but not quite. But anyway, at least they have this lovely house. Huh? Well, now I have this. <laughs> I'm conflicted about recommending this. This actually makes a good point. Everything you see here, I, um, you know, I personally recommend. So I'm on the fence about this because it did not arrived well packaged from the UK. In fact, behind it, it's a little bit damaged. I don't know if I should recommend this company, but they do make some beautiful things. Uh, I very nearly got La Scala, you know, the famous opera house, because obviously I love opera in Milan. But this one, to me, just, it's my favorite. They have Versailles, they have a whole bunch of stuff. But the best part is, comes a little set of lights. Ta-da, look at that. 
So, yeah, had to get it, had to get it. Uh, what else? Oh, you'll notice this incredible thing here. Uh, this is from Skullbliss, a very unique company. Uh, they actually are from uh, barley, ethically sourced. In fact, this is uh, produce that would have, from our agriculture, that would have gone to waste. And what they do, they employ local craftsmen, uh, and they saw a previous video and they thought, oh, you've got to have one of these. So they sent me that. And I get to specify the, the, the style of engraving. I didn't actually go for the engraving. I, I nearly went for this kind of Celtic pattern. And you can have different finishes, all the rest of it. I went for this kind of modern, it's almost like mosaic, but it has, uses glass with a black finish. So it, when you move around, it shimmers and catches light differently. You can even have the horns engraved. Uh, which is really, really cool. It's the only company I know that provides this kind of service. It makes it completely unique, you know, having something to your specifications. And you can choose from a wide variety of different animal skulls, all done by hand, of course. The great thing is you're supporting uh, local craftsmen in that country. And it's just a great, great, one of a kind art piece to have in your home. So obviously I had to go for it. So I'm really, really happy with it. So big shout out to them. And thank you so much for that. So you can see here, there's a wire you can actually hang this. I've just folded it under there, but you can pay more and get the stand for it, which I like it like that because then I can position it, have it in different places, etc. So that definitely gets my recommendation. This one, ooh, I'm not, I don't know. I think, I think it is a little overpriced for the quality of this one here. Uh, the, the Chatsworth. I, I love the idea. They just need to step it up in their packaging and shipping. Okay, so moving on. Now you may remember, this is my, well, I've got some Art Deco there, stuff there. I collect, I love collecting Art Deco uh, antiques. There's tons of it about all over the place, vases, all this kind of stuff. I found this on eBay and I love going on, on eBay. This is actually a Bakelite uh, case that Hamilton watches used to come in in the 1930s. I scored it for an absolute bargain because I needed something to store the memory cards for when I'm filming. And I love it, it's got this little velvet interior. I mean, what a stylish way to present a watch. You buy the, you know, the Hamilton, I mean, this is obviously when Hamilton was made in uh, America and you know, this, this heraldic, beautiful, uh, Engrave. Well, it's not an engraving. How would they have done this? I'm, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, regardless, it's perfect. I got it there with my little Art Deco um, 1930s Roadsters, the, the Van Essen steel, these are originals. I'm really chuffed with those. Anyway, I've, done, I've covered the chess set before. Did a whole video on it, actually. Several new books uh, with R Sir Richard Rogers sadly passing away. Personal hero of mine, British Italian, of course, and world-renowned architect, Akatron Wearer. Because I had the Akatron book, which you guys have already seen, incredible book, you can buy this from the Akatron website directly. I thought, you know what, let me buy this book again. I own it in England, but I wanted a copy of it here. Uh, I might do another video uh, on, on, on Richard Rogers and his Akatron. We'll see, we'll see if I have time. Oh yeah, before I forget, uh, some of you asked, where did Hugo buy the, uh, the T-Rex skull in the, from the last video? Well, I emailed him. He ignored me for several days. So then I called him. I said, look, I'm doing this war room video. I need to, you know, people ask him where to get the skull. And uh, of course, typical Hugo fashion. It's just a very cheap 3D printer thing from Etsy. I'll leave a link down below. Uh, it's not bad. It's pretty cool. And... Uh, you can have it open in different positions, but um, yeah, thank you, Hugo. Yeah. Okay, so here we are, the movie collection, and it's grown significantly. I still am buying a lot of DVDs. It's half Blu-ray, half DVD, mainly because a lot of the obscure, weird stuff that I like from Japan and Europe isn't always available on Blu-ray yet. So I'm still finding a lot of bargains. For example, uh, Prince of Darkness here, which I think is fairly underrated. I, of course, They Live, Halloween, The Thing, they're always gonna be the 
heavy hitters for John Carpenter. But yeah, this was not much more than you'd pay to have it streaming. And so I can rewatch this again and again and again and own it. And when the uh, internet's not working, hey, I'm still gonna be entertained. So uh, let's see some other pickups that I've been enjoying recently. Oh, and by the way, guys, you'll notice the Tom Cruise poster because the Casio, the, um, the DW290 has become my favorite Casio. I thought I'd honor it with a film poster. You guys know last War Room Tour, I was talking a lot about uh, Brian De Palma and I've just got Carlitos Way, uh, one of the last Brian De Palma films I have yet to add to the collection. I've, I've pretty much got them all now. Um, I, last time I saw that, I was a teenager. So last year was about John Woo, you know, rediscovering his classic action films, which I just adore. Even the schlocky stuff he did in America, it's not bad, you know. Broken Arrow is fairly entertaining. Great Breitling, shot of an aerospace in there on um, Travolta's wrist. Uh, sorry, I'm talking about watches all the time. So yeah, I thought I'd honor great Brian De Palma movie, one of my favorite watches, big Tom Cruise fan. Speaking of which, I even got it a Hot Wheels uh, there that you may, you may have spotted because, because of the Dan Henry. Obviously, it had to be done. Let's share a few great picks that I've uh, picked up recently. Ah, Reanimator. Can you believe I had never seen this until uh, earlier this year. Quite a fan of, of Jeffrey Combs and I met him and he signed this. I know him from uh, Deep Space Nine playing Wayun, an amazing character. And he actually, he was in Enterprise as well, but um, yeah, Barbara uh, there, Barbara Crampton. I, I've been enjoying a lot of like 80s horror. You guys may have seen the Pusher 2 poster. And incidentally, this very photograph was taken by uh, a member of uh, the Gentry, a, a fan of the channel, so uh, small world, right? Mads Mikkelsen is my favorite actor, and this year, these are my two picks for Mads films, highly underrated. I mean, I could, I could recommend you 20 underrated <laughs> Mads films, but The Salvation, wonderful Western, very visceral, violent, heartbreaking, oh God, yeah, amazing film. And then, of course, Riders of Justice. This is a dark comedy very dark comedy, okay? It's my kind of sense of humor. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you will be probably disturbed by it, but I thought it was hilarious. And it's a Christmas movie, so again, nice and violent for Christmas, yeah. <laughs> oh, there's Heat, had to get Heat. Hugo's about to be in the, in the sequel. They're doing a sequel with Uncle Bobby and uh, Al Pacino. Stay tuned for that. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Training Day, I picked up Training Day. Amazing, I could watch this film again and again. Denzel Washington, actually Ethan Hawke's great too, but Denzel, what a tour de force. He's becoming one of my favorite American actors. I mean, yeah, amazing, amazing, amazing. I highly recommend that. Akatone, a lot of these are still wrapped. I have watched these. Uh, the first Pasolini film, very, very cool indeed. This a British series called Britannia about the Roman invasion of Britain. Um, absolutely fascinating, quite trippy. I loved it. I thought it was, nobody's seen it. You know, I thought it was great. Um, if you like your historical, again, very violent, <laughs> uh, but I think it's commentary on, on, on Roman civilization and it clashing with the Druid culture and all of that was just amazing, really great. And it's got, I forget the actor's name. He was in Walking Dead. He played the governor. Oh, David Morrissey, this guy, he's so menacing without having to do anything. It's amazing. There's so much I could talk about. I could talk about movies all day. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, but stay tuned for more watches and movie content because it's something I always love sharing. So yeah, any recommendations, of course, down below. So you guys have seen this area a million times in videos. This is the light box. This is where I do majority of the work for uh, YouTube, but I also do a lot of work for um, brands and companies outside of YouTube. So this is very useful. It's got some old maps. I buy these off eBay. These are actually vintage maps from the 1940s. I just, I like the, the used texture. There's the, uh, the lava lamp. This is the second lava lamp, the first one there was something wrong with the liquid inside and it just died. But anyway, I got that. 
uh, a new one to replace it. I have these terrible watch winders, and this is a prime example. I got sent it to review, it was poorly made, it's literally falling apart. I'm not gonna recommend that <laughs> whatsoever. If you want a good watch winder, Wolf Winders. I've done, a, I've done a video a long, long time ago. Really great quality, far superior to that rubbish. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna <laughs> recommend that brand. Uh, what else? Oh, of course. This is the, the hub, the epicenter. This is where I spend most of my time um, editing. This computer here, this is, I call my YouTube computer. This is just for YouTube content everything you're watching. This is my old computer. I, I don't really use this. Let me just move that, sorry. I don't really use this anymore. This just runs the artwork. Um, so you see I have some, um, oh, uh, uh, William Blake, William Blake there. So just cycling the, the artwork. You can get all of this for free online. I, uh, there's a lot of public domain, uh, the Met uh, Museum and, and National Gallery in London. A lot of these museums have all their art, or the greatest art, downloadable for free and it's beautiful high-res images. So, ah, oh, it's Picasso, of course. All the time I'm bombarded with, enriched with all this amazing culture and art and it's just, you know, I, anyway, sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting too passionate about it. Uh, then we got the big boy computer and I could talk about the cameras and stuff, but to be honest, it bores me. I'm not really a tech guy, I prefer the editing. So, and this is predominantly what I do now is, is mostly editing. So this is the big boy computer. I actually have to replace that. This is what I use for my professional gigs. So uh, trailers, actually you've probably even seen videos I've edited and you didn't even know it was me. So I, for other channels on YouTube, uh, movie trailers, uh, short film trailers, what else have I done? Um, I've done corporate videos, you name it. In fact, if you need an editor, uh, please um, send me an email and uh, let's let's work something out. I'm, I'm always eager to uh, start new projects. This really helps the channel because back in 2020 I decided I'm only going to do YouTube part-time and I think by doing freelance editing work it keeps the channel independent because the choice would be to become a watch dealer. I don't want to do that to my audience. I think any uh, authenticity or um, kind of journalistic integrity to the review just goes out the window. You're just, sh you know, selling watches. Uh, and of course you can say, oh, what about Mark? Well, he did it the other way around. And uh, Mark has his educational series, Watch and Learn, and he's an engineer, well, ex-former engineer. So that's different. I'm not talking about that. So I don't want to, I don't want to do that to my audience. I want to keep it as a hobby, as an enthusiast. So when you watch a review from me, it's from the heart and it's, it's always, that, that's what lends it that authenticity, I, I, I feel, which underlying is so important to the channel. So by splitting it up like this, I get to still have my fun with watches, still share it and still put food on the table. And that's what it's all about. Um, talking of tables, amazing segue there covered it in the last video this is the uh, the desk mat and we have valet tray which I keep all my bits and bobs this is from yeah you know it Carl Friedrich which I've co-designed a unicorn and look at the patina so they have added something new and I love that they've expanded beyond bags um, they've added this uh, charging tray and I use it it's fantastic to, to put little pin you know all the little pins and collars and stuff cards for recording, you can personalize it and it charges your phone. It's got a, a wonderful aluminium brushed base, uh, the same vaquette leather. Of course, I went to cognac to match and it's wonderful. Again, another high quality, useful product that's gonna age wonderfully, that actually is useful from a brand I love. You guys know I've been with them since day one. Uh, nowadays, they're on I seem to see them on other YouTubers' channels and stuff, so which is great. They're getting the recognition they deserve. So, you know, when changing out the pins, changing straps, this is very useful. It's somewhere just to quickly put the spring bars and the little bits and bobs so you don't lose them. It just makes everything grab and go, and I love that kind of ease of it. And of course, I personalized it just like my other pieces here. And it comes with a lifetime uh, guarantee, which is uh, I think a lot of their products do and uh, you know, I love them. So perfect, absolutely perfect. Elegant, stylish, just like their bags, uh, durable. It's still the same finest quality that you, and the craftsmanship you get with any of their products. 
so I think cool, you know, and, and, and I love how the brushed aluminium there matches, you know, I like got my G drives, my Apple stuff, it, it complements it perfectly. It's, it's weird, it's like this, this, this great amalgamation of, you know, old and new. It, it, this is what they do so well with their designs and it just matches everything. Ah, it's perfect. I'm, I'm over the moon with all of this. I'm not sure if you can see that. I've put Godzilla there. This is Shin Godzilla from the Japanese movie, in my opinion, the best uh, Godzilla movie. And he's, he's about to destroy Big Ben there. Uh, I thought that was kind of funny, so I'll put that there. So I want to talk a little bit about my watch collecting goals for this year and the next year. Uh, they have changed once again. Okay, my long-term grail is still always in my heart that Insight micro rotor from uh, Roman Gautier. I think it is a beautiful example of tastefully designed horology. It's not flashy. I, the, the technology inside is so refined, but yet not too showy. You enjoy the getting to see the rotor and the insides and seeing it being made from start to finish in every process by the watchmaker himself if you recall that very very early uh, watch tour video in i shot in switzerland that had a profound effect on me obviously it's a very very expensive watch i'm going to buy that for myself when i turn 50 right <laughs> if i make it uh fingers crossed uh for chamon um because, you know, there's still a lot of time. I've still got a lot of time. I need time to save up. I've got other investments I want to make, you know, other businesses I want to do. So in the meantime, I want to find something crazy, something unlike what I already have. A lot of my watches are very, they're classics, they're iconic. Uh, most of them are vintage. I have quite traditional tastes. I don't like blingy, loud stuff. Uh, okay. The day date maybe but even that has a linen dial you know no diamonds nothing like that so i want something different i want something unlike everything else in my collection and, and i need you guys to help me with suggestions i would love to hear in the comments so what i'm talking about is uh, i'll give you some examples do you guys remember the visitor watch company i reviewed one of them uh, way back in the day this kind of panerai shaped case with organic um, lines in the design and, and very modern and almost kind of like sci-fi retro-ish in a way. Uh, vaguely Art Nouveau, funnily enough. And then there was the Dietrich watches. Again, I, I reviewed one very early on. As if H.R. Giger himself had designed it. This amalgamation of technology and organic kind of plant-like shapes. It was inspired by nature after all and that I think the guy behind that brand is an industrial designer so he had a very unique approach but they're unlike everything I got. Okay the Mission Impossible Casio there. Okay this is you know fairly retro and quite 80s and in its aesthetic. It's still not a wild card. That's what I want in my collection. That's what I want to find this year. This watch actually funny enough um, also reminded me that you don't have to spend a lot of money. I, I, I was starting to get in that mindset that happens to a lot of collectors of climbing, climbing the tiers, right? I don't believe in that. You know, I, again, this watch brought me back down to earth. It, it reaffirmed my belief that you don't have to spend a lot of money to have a lot of enjoyment. This is an icon. This is an incredible history. And then of course, there was the, more recently the Cartier Santos, the oldest iconic watch, the first men's watch uh, of all time, over a hundred years. I apologize about the, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go soldier on right through it. So uh, yeah, it's classical. Okay, yeah, it's a modern spin. And in some ways it does look kind of like steampunk. It does look kind of futuristic in a strange way. I'm going to do a follow-up on that. I've owned it for two months now, and it's changed my perception. Quartz, who would have thought? It's, it's stopped me itching for a lot of high-end pieces, like the Royal Oak. I, I have no desire for one anymore. I have no desire to get any higher-end pieces except for the Roman Gautier. Of course, I'm going to borrow high-end watches when I can or when relevant to review, but that's to review. That's totally different. I'm talking about for my collection. I'm having fun 
re-explore, re-exploring, is that a word? I don't know, it is now. Re-exploring um, a lot of entry level stuff because I, you know, this really has awakened that in me. Um, and I think you guys appreciate that. So yeah, I wanna hear your suggestion. I would like to find something a bit you know, quirky, a bit avant-garde, a bit challenging, unlike everything in my collection, you know? And I wanna hear your suggestions. Okay guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Please don't forget to add your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below, especially nominations for a wild card watch for my collections. You know, don't forget something a bit quirky, something a bit left field with an outlandish design, preferably, uh, that you think I'd appreciate. Uh, what else? Oh, don't forget to like this video. Very important indeed, especially if you want to see more free content and independent like this. Right, I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.